Hi guys, it's Kaylin, and today we're going to be doing a wrap-up video. I'm going to be telling you guys about all the books I read in September, and then I'm also going to include my potential October TBR. So let's get into it. Let's talk about where I keep track of all of my bookish stats. So I use the app Fable and I absolutely love Fable. If you don't know, Fable is kind of like the Instagram threads plus Goodreads all in one and I really enjoy it a lot. So in the month of September, I read four physical books, two ebooks, and two audiobooks. So that is a grand total of eight books which I'm pretty proud of that's a great month for me so let's go in and let's start with the audiobooks the first audiobook I listened to was Dearest by Jacqueline Walters in this book you're following Flora who is a brand new mother to a six-week-old baby girl named Iris her husband Connor is deployed so she is on her own her dad and her stepmom have just left her so officially she's taking care of this baby by herself and she's kind of freaking out a little bit I mean who wouldn't be I mean come and she is not getting the best of sleep so her mind's kind of playing tricks on her is what it seems like so in her last leg she reaches out to her strange mother who she hasn't seen in four years her mother randomly shows up without even telling her she's coming and weird stuff starts happening she starts hearing voices her mother is confirming that she's hearing these voices too toys are getting put in places that weren't put there they're turning on without batteries being on and her imaginary best friend shows up too on top of things and secrets are coming out and I really enjoyed this book a lot this was this author's debut novel and I believe it's categorized as a horror novel which I would definitely say that is look up trigger warnings but I don't read horror novels a lot that's a genre that's out of my comfy zone but I saw this one on my library and I thought this sounds good so let me get it and it was very good I loved the twist in this book the twists were twisting okay i love me a twisty book and this book delivered on the twist so i do recommend it but just go into it and check trigger warnings trust me i gave this book i think i give this book a four star the next book i read was a sequel and that was somewhere beyond the sea by tj clune this is the sequel to the house in the cerulean sea which i absolutely adore this book so much how i describe this book is or it's kind of like a children's story for adults i guess is a better way to say it so i cannot tell you what somewhere beyond the sea is about because it's a sequel to this book but i'll tell you what the house in the cerulean sea is about so in this book you're following linus baker who is a type a person okay he has his routine he works for the Department of Magic like he's a caseworker and he gets assigned this case to go to this foster house that is run by this guy named Arthur and he has six of the most dangerous children that could ever exist there one of them being Lucifer and so he goes and he didn't expect the unexpected to happen and it's just a very heartwarming story and I absolutely love this book but I also really love Somewhere Beyond the Sea it's a great conclusion to this story it tied a bunch of things up and yeah if you're looking for a book that is very low stakes that you kind of just want to get a feeling of like warm and fuzzy I would definitely recommend these two books I think I gave that book a four star it wasn't as good as the first book but it was a very good closure book let's move on to kindle books so i read two kindle books first book i read is the prison healer by lynette noe and in this book you're following this girl named kiva who is a healer in this prison called zalendove i believe is how you pronounce it and her task is to treat all the newcomers that come into the prison and kind of prepare them for what they're about to get into but also to heal people and she was there 10 years ago with her dad and her dad sadly passed away in this prison it's a very harsh conditions not a lot of people survive so the fact that she's been there for 10 years is crazy but when the rebel queen comes into her hands she has to prepare her for this thing called the ordeal which is a bunch of tasks that are basically set so the prisoner like goes to death and she has to prepare this prisoner for it and with this book it was a very interesting read because actually I went into this not knowing much about this book this is a YA book by the way and when I first picked this book up it took me a minute to actually get into it and once I got to know the characters I started to really enjoy the story I won't lie this book was extremely boring and slow at points but the last like little chunk of the book like I'm talking like the last five percent of the book was so good the twist at the end had me shook I was looking up reviews on fable when I started this book because I'm like this book is highly rated 
I don't, I wasn't understanding it because it just wasn't good in the beginning. And people said the ending is what like got them to highly rate it. And I do agree like that bumped it up a star because that ending was so good. And it makes me excited to go into the next books. I think I gave this book like a three star. It was a two star originally and I gave it a three star. The next book I read was The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hildebrand. Now I actually read this book when I was in the Outer Banks, which was the perfect surrounding because this book takes place in Nantucket, which is far from the Outer Banks, but it's still the beach vibes okay in this book you were following this family who's crazy rich I mean beyond rich okay and they live in Nantucket and it is currently wedding season their son is getting married to this girl and the family doesn't really approve of her because she's not from like their type of family and the morning of the wedding a body comes to shore and so the chief of police starts interviewing every single one of the family members plus like all the workers that work for the family and lies are coming out affairs are coming out just like all kinds of stuff is coming out they're airing everyone's dirty laundry and it's crazy so what i will say about this book is they did an excellent job translating this to screen the show is so much better and i really say that about books so if you're looking for a new show to binge the perfect couple the show is so good it's slightly different from the book but i think it's a good different because the book honestly the book is not as exciting as the show makes it out to be and that's okay and I think I gave this book a two star because it, it just wasn't I just wasn't enjoying it I think if there was no TV show I wouldn't I would have DNF'd it I mean I, sh I probably could have DNF'd it but I, I was being headstrong and I just wanted to like see this because sometimes with thrillers like you have to get to a certain point and it's like okay this is good so it was just very interesting that's my thought on that the first physical book I read was The Unmaking of June Farrell this has been on my TBR since last year I think and I heard this was a perfect book to read the end of summer going into fall and that's exactly what I did in this book you're following June Farrell who lives on a flower farm with her grandma in North Carolina and her grandmother just passed away there has been a mysterious kind of curse illness that goes through their family the women in this family are known to start hearing things seeing things and as soon as that happens they basically go a little crazy and her mom died when she was little and so after her grandma passed June starts seeing the things that everyone sees and she is on a mission to kind of figure out like what happens to her mom and also what is happening to her and that opens a door to a whole bunch of family secrets that she was kept from this book was really interesting this is a magical realism book i believe and i just loved it i loved the writing in this book it was very whimsical at times and also kind of cozy and i highly recommend this book i cannot believe it took me so long to read this book and i really love june and everything that happens to june and just her story and i gave this book a five star it was an unexpected five star and i will forever recommend it i've been yapping so much i need some water Next book I read was Legendary. This is part of the Carvel trilogy. This is the second book in the trilogy. And I can't tell you what this book is about, but I can tell you what Carvel is about. So in Carvel, you're following two sisters named Donatella and Scarlett. She's always dreamed of going to this festival named Carvel. Carvel is a magical festival that is set over a period of a week and everything is kind of not as it seems. Like it's nothing's real in Carvel and you can only go by invitation and into like a traveling like festival kind of like a not really a circus but it's like a traveling festival and so she has been writing to the master of Carvel his name is legend for as long as she can remember and she finally gets an invite so her and her sister go and what she doesn't know is that her sister Donatella has been swept up in the game and is now part of the game and so she has to win this game in order to save her sister it's so good I flew through Carvel the same thing about legendary with legendary we get the appeal be from Donatella not what happened in the first book but we get the continuation of the story from Donatella's point of view and I wasn't sure how I was gonna like Donatella because of how she's portrayed in book one but I I really love Donatella compared to Scarlet Donatella is definitely an interesting read I wouldn't say there's a ton of romance in this book there is a romance but it's not like known for the romance it's more known for the story this is just a very whimsical story and I think it's the perfect trilogy to pick up this time of year because to me like fall is definitely fantasy like fall winter is fantasy for me for sure so if you're looking for a new fantasy trilogy to try out 
try out this. It's YA. It's super easy to read, super quick and fast paced too. You won't be disappointed. Speaking of being disappointed, my next book is Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. I have had an interesting journey with Riley Sager. I've read four of his books, I think, so far, and I've only really liked two out of the four. So he's either like a love or hate for me. But this book, I heard this was like the perfect like 90s thriller and I wanted to love it. In this book, you're following this guy named Ethan who when he was a little boy, he was having a sleepover with his one of his neighbors slash his best friend in his backyard in a tent and the friend goes missing and no one has been able to figure out why. So, so years later, he moves back into the neighborhood, the exact house house where it took place because his parents called him up and said hey you want the house we're traveling so he goes and he moves in this house and he starts having this reoccurring nightmare where he can hear the rip of the tent and so he's kind of on a mission to figure out what happened because he's like this is trying to tell me something so interesting concept right however I feel like it was so boring this execution of this was incredibly boring and I'm like can we get on with it can we move on with this I mean it's a quick read it keeps you reading because you kind of want to know what happens but I think that's a thing with every thriller and mystery is you want to keep reading to know exactly what the twist is and what is happening I just I don't think this one is worth the read what are you guys opinion on that if you're a Riley Sager fan let me know what you thought of this book because I just didn't think it was as good as his last two books have been I think I gave this book a two star the last book I read was The House of Glass by Sarah in. I don't have the dust jacket for it. I actually don't know where it went. But this is a thriller about this lawyer named Stella who works cases for younger people. And she is the one to kind of decide like which parent they go to, what happens, you know, custody type things. But she gets handed this case about this little girl named Rose who's nine years old. She found her nanny dead. And so ever since then, she's been mute. She doesn't talk, but she has, she's drawn to sharp objects. So Stella is assigned to this case because she actually went through something similar. Stella, when she was younger, was actually mute as well because of a tragic event that happened. So they think she's best fit for this. But as soon as she goes into this, stuff starts unraveling. Like this family is not your normal family. It's very weird. And I really enjoy this. I read this pretty much in one sitting. I sat down when I was in North Carolina on the front porch and read this probably up until I had like 100 pages left. And I was like, wow, I flew through that. If you're looking for your next like popcorn thriller is kind of what I call it, where you just can't get enough and you like need to read it check out this one. I really enjoyed this book. I think I gave it a four star. I don't really ever set TBRs for myself because I plan my videos kind of last minute and they kind of just pop into my head. So I never pre-plan stuff, which is kind of bad. I probably need to pre-plan, but these four books are kind of on my radar for October. I don't know if I'm going to read them all, but these next four books are the books that I want to fit into my October TBR. It's not going to be every single book I read in October. Of course, you'll have to wait for the wrap up, but I did want to talk about the book I'm currently reading, which is Immortal Dark. I'm 50% of the way through this book, and I'm really liking this book. This book is a vampire book, but it's a different take on vampire. I'll talk more about this in my wrap up, but I am really liking it so far. The next book I'm going to read in October or try to is Phantasma. I've been hearing nothing but good things about this book and I need to know what the hype is about like I just need to know I got this book for September's book of the month I was gonna save it actually for October anyways because it just screamed October to me but now I'm really excited I saved it because I, I think this is gonna be like the perfect like Halloween book like I said fall winter is the season's for fantasy so I want to try to read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstein. This has been on my TBR for such a long time and at this point it's kind of gotten to I either read it or we unhaul it because I'm sick of looking at it at my TBR being unread so we're gonna read it this month. And the last book is Finale by Stephanie Garber. This is the final book to the Carvel trilogy. I'm actually currently in the process of filming a video about finishing series and this series is on there. I've started this already. I'm 93 pages into it. So can't wait to finish it for October. Those are all the books I read in September and the books I'm gonna potentially read in October. I hope you guys liked this video. Let me know what you read in September and are excited to read in October because I would love to know. Remember to be kind to yourself and others around you and I will see you guys very, very soon.